Hello, welcome to S&J Engines. My name is Jeff Johnson. Today we're going to talk about boring and honing. Uh, boring is what we have to do to the cylinder block in order to make a proper fit for the pistons in the manufacturing process. And boring is obviously required and we use a Rottler F2 boring bar, which is really cool. It's the latest and the greatest. It's all automated. So you'll see that the uh, block is in the bar and all the programmer has to do is, we're going to use a 350 Chevrolet for an example here. All the programmer has to do is dial in 350 Chevrolet and what size he's going to bore it to. Let's use for an example, we're going to put a 30 over piston into this block. So we have to bore the block out 30 thousandths. Uh, 30 thousandths, in order to get 30 thousandths, we actually we are actually only removing 15 thousandths of material from each side. Now how does 15 thousandths equate to 30 thousandths? Well 15 thousandths from this side of the cylinder and 15 thousandths from this side of the cylinder you measure across you've taken out 30 thousandths. So the bar as I said is automatic. The program will dial in uh, 350. The boring bar knows that a 350 uses a 4 inch bore, a uh, 4 inch piston and he's going to bore it actually 28 thousandths over. He's going to bore it to exactly the same size as the piston because we're going to have to hone it. And when we're done, we want two thousandths of an inch clearance. Now, two thousandths of an inch clearance isn't very much, but that's what we have to have is two thousandths of an inch. This bar is uses a boring bit, and in the old days, we used hardened steel and we had to sharpen the bit ourselves. The disadvantage of that is that a steel bit, no matter how sharp it is, will heat up. Heat is, is our enemy. We can't have heat while we're machining. What happens if you heat a piece of metal? It will expand. So as the bit gets hot, it expands and now your size is off because the bit's expanded Plus, it will transfer the heat to the cylinder wall, and the cylinder wall will expand. So, uh, with a stainless, with a steel bit that we had to sharpen, you can be off as high as a quarter to a half a thousandths as it goes down the cylinder. Disadvantage of that, the problem with that is now your cylinder, instead of being straight up and down, and the concentricity being nice and round, you have a bell-shaped cylinder. Today, we use what we call a ceramic bit. And a ceramic bit, ceramic doesn't heat. If the ceramic doesn't heat, it can't transfer. It can't get hot and expand, and it can't transfer heat to the cylinder wall and make it expand. So with this Rottler F5, we use a ceramic bit. It goes straight down, comes straight back up, and then it knows what to do. It just comes over to the next cylinder all by itself, centers itself, squares itself away, and bores it out. So when we're done boring, we have a cylinder that is 28 thousandths, two thousandths shy of what the piston clearance needs to be. Uh, like I said earlier, it's the same exact size as the piston. And you will notice that the boring bar operator will also have a light underneath the cylinder that he's boring, and when he's done, he will check that cylinder to make sure it's not cracked. Uh, the neat thing about boring is those metal filings become magnetic. And if there's a crack in that cylinder, they're attracted to that crack. And you look under there and you'll see it. And one, once again, checking for quality. So as I mentioned earlier, the next step is the hone. And the hone is very critical. The boring bar does a rough cut, uh, but the hone has to do the finish, the, the correct cross hatch, and the correct clearance. And keep concentricity around cylinder and keep the cylinder straight up and down without bell, bell mouthing it. This, what we use is a Sunnen CK10. Once again, it's the latest and the greatest, and once again, it's automated. The disadvantage of the old style homes that used to be, that were used in the past, is that they used a abrasive grit hone, and abrasive grit needed cooling oil. Cooling oil is not real green. It leaves a huge carbon footprint. Uh, when you're done with it, what do you do with it? Uh, you have to send it to some place where they can dispose of it for you. And the uh, abrasive stones would wear. 
while they were being used. And they would heat. Once again, as mentioned earlier, once heat starts to show up, metal starts to expand and they would normally be larger at the bottom of the cylinder than they were at the top because of that heat. Today, this hone, CK10, uses a diamond hone. They're industrial diamonds instead of stone, and the industrial diamonds don't heat. They're like the ceramic cutting bit. They don't heat, they don't transfer heat, and we can use a biodegradable coolant. All the coolant's for, it's not really even a coolant, it's a flush. All it does is keep the honing grit off the diamonds so they don't plug up. This, the diamond hones uh, will give a smooth finish, which is very important. In the old days, we could go with a 28RA. A 28RA is the measurements we use in machining. This desk in front of me has an RA of 60. When we're honing with, for the new engines, we have to have an RA of approximately 10 which is pushing glass smooth. The old engines, the older engines of yesteryear, uh, pushed the rings, pushed against the cylinder walls with 28 pounds. So you could have an RA of around 28 and the rings pushed against the cross hatch and the cylinder walls hard enough to where they would seat themselves. Remember in the old days you had to drive a car long enough for the rings to seat? Today that's not true. Today the rings have to be seated when we're finished. The rings are actually run through a cylinder from the ring manufacturer and seated before they're put in the box and shipped to us. So the rings are seated before we even take them out. That means that we have to have a finish in the cylinder wall that is equal to a ring that has already rubbed against the cylinder wall and seated itself. We have to have an RA of approximately 10. The diamond hone will do that automatically and will give us a perfect 33 degree crosshatch. Why do you have to have a crosshatch at all? Because when you have a crosshatch, you have peaks and valleys. The valley is an oil reservoir, and that oil reservoir in those valleys of the crosshatch will keep oil, and it will isolate the pistons and the rings from the cylinder wall. There's always a film of oil molecules between the cylinder, the rings, and the pistons so that they never actually make physical contact. The CK10 also is automated as, and it knows if the cylinder is round with the correct concentricity and it also knows that it is not bell mouthed at the bottom. And as you watch this machine operate, you will you'll watch it take full strokes and then all of a sudden you'll, stop, you'll watch it stop and take little short strokes wherever it knows that that cylinder isn't exactly the same as everything else. When this, when this machine is finished, it has automatically knows that it's taken out the required amount. If we leave three thousands to hone out, it knows we left three thousands. If we leave two thousands, it knows we left two thousands. Keep in mind that the piston has to have two thousands of clearance and on the average. Some pistons require one, some pistons require three, but most all pistons require two thousands of an inch clearance. Two thousands of an inch cold. When the spark plug ignites the fuel, it's a three thousand degree burn. Remember heat makes metal expand. Aluminum will really expand and pistons are made out of aluminum. They will expand out two and a half thousandths under operating temperatures. That leaves a half a thousandths of an inch for that piston to run up and down on. It has to be perfect. There's no room for air and this machine will do that. For more webisodes, check us out online at www.snjengines.com.